I've had a minor charging issue with my alternator. Um, here it is, just here. And um, like all things when it comes to charging, you need to establish whether it's actually the alternator that's at fault or if there's another problem. So, um, so I've done all sorts of tests. I actually found the problem pretty easily, but before I do the fix, I thought I'd talk you through um, various very simple tests you can do on an alternator using a very simple multimeter although today I'm just going to be using my uh, fluke uh, just because it's easier for um, for the stuff I'm going to be showing you but uh, you know a bog standard cheap um, multimeter is absolutely fine there's actually quite a, a few issues that you can have with alternators so I'm going to break it down into into different videos so today we're just going to be dealing with um, basic charging, how to test your alternator properly and, um, and how to establish if you have got an alternator fault or if it's um, something as simple as a poor connection and I'll show you how to do voltage drop tests as well and explain how that works. So, um, so first thing to do, because my battery is in the boot I'm actually going to be running my test from this um, positive point in the um, engine bay but before I do that I am going to test the battery uh, just to make sure that the battery voltage is the same as the the voltage here um, otherwise the test will be uh, inaccurate but if you if your battery is in the engine bay you can skip this bit just go straight to testing it from the battery now ideally what you want to do when you're testing your alternator is if you've got someone to do it with you um, when you're running your test to have the engine revs at around about you know one to two uh, one and a half to two thousand revs um, I'm working on my own today as I normally do so if you're doing it on your own then the important thing is to get the engine running but then to load up the electrical system so the alternator is actually having to work so I'm going to put everything on that I can main beam so um, that's as good as uh, running the the engine at higher revs because uh, I want a, a, a good load going through the alternator so let's get the battery tested okay so here we are in the boot this is my relatively new battery only about eight weeks old something like that so I know all my connections are clean and corrosion free you don't really get corrosion problems though when the battery's in the boot. Um, so I'm just running it on here. It was at 13.3 uh, volts DC. Uh, but I'm just leaving it on here just for about 30 seconds or so. Um, because the, the aircon compressor is cycling in and out. And that can place an additional load on the engine. So just want to see roughly where we're up to. So we'll say 13.3 volts there coming from the uh, the battery, and I'll just verify that now in the engine bay with the um, with the other post. Okay, so apologies for the uh, vibrations. So there we go again between 13.3 and 13.4 volts there so I'll be using the figures from uh, from the engine bay now what I would expect on a fully functioning system even fully loaded up at idle uh, I want to be seeing probably about 0 0.4 0 0.5 volts higher so I want to see if the the relatively low reading of 13.3, 13.4, I want to see whether it's the alternator or whether it's um, something else. So now I'm going to test the alternator, and on your alternator you'll have a connection, a post, with a big red cable coming out of it. I'm going to put the multimeter on, on the actual post itself, and um, that's with the red lead and then the black lead. I'll just be putting on a, an earth connection uh, on the wing just there and we'll see what reading we get from the alternator. Okay so I've got the red lead on the alternator post just there, the black lead's going to go on an earth connection. And 
the C 13.8, 13.9 volts, which is more, much more what I would be expecting. So you can see that that low voltage actually on the battery isn't being caused by the alternator. The alternator is actually pumping out close to 14 volts there. So we need to start looking for why voltage is being lost. Okay, so to conduct the voltage drop test, what I'm going to do is get the red multimeter lead and put it on the alternator post just there, and then the black multimeter lead will be going onto this positive connection just there. And the figure that we're looking for is. Um, less than 0.2, ideally getting close to 0.1 really. So if it's above 0.2 then we've got a bad connection going on. So I'll just do that now. Okay so the black lead the black leads on the positive post which would be your battery post and the red lead is now on the alternator. And as you can see on the display there 0.3 sometimes higher, 0.32 volts. So that's the voltage loss or the voltage drop between the alternator post and there. And considering it's a direct connection with this cable which runs around the engine and goes directly to the alternator, that means there's either a problem with the cable or a problem with the connections. And um, and looking at the connections down in there, well you can see all the, the muck that's gathered up around it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do it on both ends, on the alternator and on this. I'm going to take those off and, uh, and get them clean, shiny, buffed up so it's clear metal to metal contact. I'm going to do it on, on the battery post and also the alternator. And let's see if we can bring that voltage drop down and get a decent charging again. Now the engine's off, I'll just very quickly explain exactly what's happening with that voltage drop test. Basically, if you've got um, a connection, um, so, so on this, you've got the, um, the red lead that, like I say, travels down around the engine and ends up there. So in theory, if, if, if everything, if the connections are absolutely fine and the wiring is, is fine, all the voltage should pass directly between that point and that point. Now if the connections aren't so good, because electricity is inherently lazy, what it will do is some of the voltage will instead when you've got the multimeter connected up, because the multimeter leads are nice and, no, and low resistance, some of the electricity instead will divert through the multimeter. And, and it's that escaping electricity that's diverted that then becomes, that then registers on the multimeter and is your voltage drop. And like I say, there is an acceptable amount, um, ideally looking for less than 0 0.2, but anything over that means that the the electric the, the the connection between those two points isn't as good as it could be uh, because too much is escaping through the multimeter and registering on the display. So that's that's what you're looking for. That's what you're testing for with the voltage drop. And you can also do a voltage drop test on the ground side as well by the exact same principle, just finding a very good earth connection and then grounding the other lead on. Um, on the alternator and the easiest way to decide which end your problem is is if you have a positive reading on the display so there's no dash if you have a positive reading then your problem connection is whichever lead whichever side is connected to the black lead if you have a negative connection on there a negative reading sorry on there then your problem connection is more than likely then on the red side. It's it's whichever the red lead is connected to. 
but to be honest once you've found a voltage drop you're better to just clean up both ends of the connection just to be safe um, and and hopefully sort your problem out so let's get these bits cleaned up okay because both the connections um, in the engine bay that we're going to be undoing are live uh, permanently live um, I'm going to disconnect the battery negative lead to break the circuit and uh, and that means you won't injure yourself uh, should you accidentally short the live leads under the bonnet onto a part of the engine or onto any other earth connection so very important disconnect your battery negative lead obviously follow whatever procedure for your car keep your radio code you know whatever you need to do okay so I've got the alternator connection off here a um, bit difficult to see how dirty it is but the, there's there's definitely muck on that connection there and then these under bonnet connections here these are a little bit more obvious and if you imagine the the current is coming you know through this section here onto this plate so all these little bits on the way to here they can all add up and if you've got lots and lots of corrosion on a, on lots of different bits it can soon add up and uh, and just take away the um, <coughs> the you know uh, even if it's tenths of a volt that could be the difference between your battery not charging properly especially um, in winter if all the alternators load isn't going into the car system so I'll be cleaning up that and that one there which connects through to the uh, the one in the boot and I'll just be using my Dremel with a wire brush attachment you can clean it up obviously with kitchen towel and if it's a bit greasy use something like brake cleaner or whatever just basically just get it spotless that's the important thing Excellent, so that's all cleaned up now. I mean, you can see the, the nice copper sheen there and that's just beautiful, smooth, bare metal. So I'll get a really, really good contact. Same again on this lower one here. Much, much better. And don't forget the surface that it goes onto. That's been cleaned up as well because that's linked to the fuse box here. So it's all about giving electricity you know the the easiest route um, so it doesn't go wandering off all over the place so I'll get this connected up and let's see if we can take some more figures okay well it's the moment of truth now alternator connections back on yeah that looks much better now look at that fantastic right so let's get the camera set up and let's see what voltage reading we're getting now so first of all I'm going to test in effect the battery post that connection under the bonnet excellent so we've gone from 13.3 13.4 back up to just just about 14 volts 13.9 so that's from that's from the connection just there so let's see what, if that's translating to what the alternator's putting out now so I'll just do the alternator excellent the alternator's gone up just a little bit more as well it was hovering around 13.9 before was it and it's now comfortably staying over so even though the alternator connection wasn't really the problem just cleaning it up has just helped translate what it's producing out onto the connection and then the final test is where I do the voltage drop test so positive lead on the alternator negative lead on the post there and we're going to see what the difference is now before it was at that problem 0.3 volts something like that 
so let's see if we can get it below 0.2 now. Fantastic. So we're now down to 0.1. So there you have it. What on the face of it looked like a alternator charging problem just turned out to be a dirty connection problem. So never write off an alternator just because you're not getting the figures that you expect. Always check on the posts. So I was checking on the post there, post on the alternator. Always do it post to post. And then, you know, if you've got a voltage drop between the posts, then it's uh, more than likely the connections between them. It's very unlikely you'd actually ever have to change the whole wire. It's nearly always a connection there. Doesn't mean that you can't have other problems with an alternator. There's any number of other problems, and I'll do those in the other series, um, in the other parts um, of this series of alternator testing. But yeah, that's a great result. Uh, just from taking what maybe five ten minutes of uh, disconnecting stuff cleaning it up and putting it back together and I hope you find all that information useful and thanks for watching